Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at the last lesson of chapter 8, Choosing a Sample Size. This is a little bit different than what we've been doing. We've been finding confidence intervals. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to determine what your sample size should be. So sometimes when you're in a design stage of a project, you want to look ahead and decide in advance on the confidence level that you would want to use to find E for your project. And how you choose to make these decisions will depend on the requirements of your project and the practical nature of the problem. Whatever specifications you make, the next step is going to be to determine a sample size. So the methods that we're going to be using in today's lesson are justifiable because we're going to be using samples that are going to be have at least 30 trials, so large samples only. And we're going to look at um, determine, first, we're going to look at here determining the sample size for a large sample. I'm not going to read this word for word for you because you're already very familiar with how to do confidence intervals for large samples. I'm just going to circle key points that in a large sample n was greater than or equal to 30. And this is the formula we use to find e. So in order to find n, we need to solve this formula for n. And if you do that, you get this formula. All right. Now, I just want to make an important note here. If you look at this paragraph, it says, since the result may not be a whole number, we're always going to round up to the nearest whole number. This will be the minimum number of values that you would need for your sample in order to be within E units of a population mean for the given level of confidence. All right. So that's one scenario where we're looking for the sample size. Next, we're going to be um, looking at two more scenarios, determining the sample size in a binomial when we know p hat, and determining the sample size in a binomial if we don't know p hat. All right, so if we know p hat, obviously, we have our formula here, right? And same idea, we're going to solve that formula for n, and if we do that, and I won't put you through the algebra for that, even though I know you'd love it, kidding. Um, if you solve that formula for n, we're going to get what's in the box. All right. That's if we have p hat, if we have the proportion. So if we know the number of successes and the number of trial trials, and we're able to calculate p hat, then we would use this formula. Now, the other and final scenario that we could have when we're determining a sample size in a binomial is if you don't know p hat. All right, so if you don't have those values, what we're going to do instead is we're going to um, use 0.25 for the p hat times 1 minus p hat. Now, if you haven't already done so, this is the last um, row rather at the bottom of your formula sheet, and you need to pause the video and fill that in right now. All right, let's take a look at our first problem. I've got two problems in this lesson, just to give you a feel for how it'll work. So it says, earlier we discussed a study on physical attractiveness in a prior lesson we did, and we found a confidence in interval for the population mean of a rating which was done on a scale of one to five, where 231 subjects were rated for attractiveness. In the sample, we used a mean of 3.94 and a standard deviation of 0.75, and we constructed a 95% confidence interval where we found a value of E to be 0.10. All right, so suppose we are asked to form a 95% confidence interval so that, our, so that we are within 0.05 of the population mean. How large should our sample size be? So that is always the key question you're looking at when you know that you're going to use a formula that starts with n equals. The question will always be, how large should your sample be? All right, so it says write the formula you will need to find the sample size. So first we have to decide, do we have a large sample or do we have a binomial? Well, one really key thing you're looking for in a binomial is you're going to see the word proportion. And we don't have that word here. This is not a binomial, right? This is a large sample. So we're going to make a note here. We have a large sample. It's either going to be a large sample or a binomial. 
we have a large sample. And remember, n is greater than or equal to 30 for a large sample. And I'm just going to make a note, and this is not a binomial. And if we look at our formula sheet, right, for a large sample, we would be using that formula. So I'm just going to write the formula down. It's always a good habit to write the formula down before you try to fill it in. It saves from little possible mistakes you could make. You could make. There's our formula for n. So we want to identify uh, z sub c. We want to identify what sigma is, and we also want to know what e is. All right, so z sub, we want a 95% confidence interval. So what is the value of z for a 95% confidence interval? So in this case, you would use the bottom row of table six. I'll show you what I mean. Let me open that up. All right, so this is table six. It's on the back of your formula sheet. I'm just going to highlight that row here. We're looking for Z for 0.95. So that's this column right here. And it's this guy. So this is your Z scores. So for this problem, it's 1.96. Let's go back to our notes. And we're going to write 1.96. We need to know what our um, standard deviation is. And that was given right here that says the standard deviation was 0.75. And then we need to know what E is. And they said within. So within is a key word where you're, we're finding E. Usually that word will come before the value we're looking for. So within 0.05, E is 0.05. So n is going to be equal to our z-score, 1.96, times our standard deviation, divided by e. Put that in your calculator. I would say pause the video. Make sure you know how to enter this in correctly. And you're going to get 864.36. Now, remember, we said that n is going to be a whole number. So n is going to be greater than or equal to 864.36. So that means it's going to be 865. So we need a sample size of at least 865 people in order to meet the requirements for a 95% confidence interval within 0.05 of the um, population mean. All right, now, a little tricky question here at the end. How many more will we have to add to our pre preliminary study? So we know we need 100, 865. Our preliminary study said that we used uh, 231 original people in our in our um, study there. So we're going to subtract 231. So that's going to give us 634 more people needed in the sample. All right, so we had two part question there. How many do we need? And then how many more than the original study? used. Okay, let's take a look at number two. We wish to do a survey of students at Studymore University to determine a 90% confidence interval for the proportion, jackpot keyword right here, proportion. All right, that means that this is a binomial. It's not a large sample. For the proportion of students who change their major at least once while enrolled, we need to be within a 0.01 of the true proportion. All right, so within 0.01, that's your big clue, that's E. 
right? If no preliminary study is available, how large should we make our sample, right? So no um, preliminary study. So we do not know p hat, all right? I'm just going to make a note. This is a binomial. And we do not know our friend p hat. So if we go back up to our formula sheet, bring it there, instead of this formula, we don't know p hat, so we're going to be using that formula for this question. So we're going to write that down, good habit. Always want to write our formula down first before we fill it in. It's good practice. One of the best practice, practices you can do in order to eliminate making mistakes, at least try to eliminate. Now, we need to know Z sub 0.9 because we're looking at a 90% confidence interval. We'll go to our table. We'll find 0.9 at the top. Let's see, I'll use a different color here. So here's going to be our z-score, 1.645, right? And we need to know what e is, and we've already identified that as 0.01. So n is equal to 0.25 times 1.645 over 0.01 squared. All right, and that is going to give us 6765.0625. So n has to be greater than or equal to 6765.0625. So remember, we're talking about we need a whole number. So how many students would we, would we need for the future survey? We would need 6,000. 766. All right, let's take a look at number three. Suppose we do a preliminary study for our estimation of P, the proportion of students at study more university, so we know we're, we're dealing with a binomial again, right? Keyword here, proportion. We know that we have a binomial. And it looks like this time they're saying that, you know, we do a preliminary study, so we're going to know p hat. So the proportion of students at study more who change their majors and find out that out of 1527, that would be n, in the study, 1038, number of successes, change their majors at least once while at study more. How many more would we need for our sample in order to be within... 0.01, so that would be E, of the true proportion with a 90% confidence interval. So C is 0.9. Write the formula you will need to find the sample size. All right, so we, it's a binomial, and we do no P hat this time because p hat is r divided by n, right? So it's 1038 divided by 1527, and that's going to be 0.68. We did use this problem in another lesson, so it should look familiar, but we weren't looking for sample size when we did that. I'm going to write the formula out. Oh, let's just go back to our formula sheet to see that. So this time it's a binomial and we know p hat, so it's going to be this formula. p hat times 1 minus p hat. I kind of like saying p hat, it's fun. Okay, make the substitutions. Well, we know p hat is 0.68. We need to know the value of the z-score for 0.90. I think we looked that up already, right? 1.645. We need to know what A is. 
we identified that right here, right? It's within. Within is the word you're looking for when you're trying to find a point oh one. All right, we'll make the substitutions into the formula. And we're gonna get five eight 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 point three one oh four. And it's gonna be has to be greater than or equal to five eight 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 point three one oh four. We round up to the nearest whole number unless we get a whole number. You know, if we get if let's say we got uh fifty nine hundred exactly even, no decimal, then n would be fifty nine hundred. But because we're getting a decimal, we're always going to just round up. So how many would we need um, in the sample? We would need 5889 needed in the sample. But they're asking how many more. So the original was um, 1,527. So we've got to do 5889 minus 1527 make a little note here original number in sample when we do that we get 4362 more people needed Just put a box around that, a little happy star. And that is the last lesson of chapter eight. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.